Welcome everybody to Maine's Busy Beavers virtual field trip. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes. Just a reminder, if you are joining us through Zoom, you are muted both microphone and camera. But if you are participating through Zoom, there is a chat and a question and answer feature that if you hover over your Zoom toolbar, you can access those. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes. So we're just going to give another couple of minutes. If you're just joining us, um, welcome to Maine's Busy Beavers. We got a, about two more minutes while we let people log in. A few people are still working things out. Um, if you're joining us through Zoom, you do have that question and answer and chat option. Um, so go ahead if you need something to write in there. Um, and in just about a minute or two, we'll get started. Thank you.
All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Maine's Busy Beavers. Uh, my name is Laura, and I work for Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And we are going to be talking today about Maine's Busy Beavers. And um, we have um, one of our educators down at the uh, Maine Wildlife Park, Jade, and she's going to be teaching us today about the beavers of Maine. So let me present Jade to you. Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Jade and I'm an educator for the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Today we are at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray, which is part of uh, Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Here at the park we have many types of Maine native wildlife. Um, some examples are bear, black bears, moose, owls, snakes, turtles, bobcats, beaver, and many more. Um, all the animals here are here because they are injured, orphaned, um, or in some cases even they were illegal pets and they were human dependent or otherwise unable to live in the wild. So all the animals here are non-releasable and can't live in the wild on their own anymore. And if you want any more information about the park, you can visit mainewildlifepark.com. Today, we're learning about Maine's busy beaver. We'll talk about beaver adaptations, how they change their environment, and a little about their history. Maybe the beaver here at the park will show herself to us too. Right now, she's at the far end. Um, she just got her breakfast. So she's eating, um, but she's been eating for a few minutes. So hopefully she'll swim by and say hello to us at some point. So to get started about main busy beavers, uh, beavers are able to drastically change their environment, their landscape, um, thanks to a lot of different behavioral and physical adaptations. And a lot of those, almost every physical and behavioral adaptation complements one another. And we'll go into more detail about all these as we go. Here you can see um, the general picture of a beaver and they are a large rodent that is designed to live in a wetland habitat. They've been around for millions of years, although their ancient ancestors were much, much larger. They were giant beavers um, compared to today's beavers, which average around 55 pounds. So today's beavers still have many of those exact same physical and behavioral adaptations though, and they all help them survive and care for their young. And that's what adaptations are all about. It's all about survival um, and passing that on from generation to generation. So some of their physical adaptations that we'll talk about are their strong teeth, their fur, their special feet, and some other features that allow them to survive in their wetland habitat. And we'll talk about some of those behaviors too, such as their communication skills, um, such as their tail slaps for warning for danger, um, and also how they can hear flowing water, which leads them to build dams and, and how they also build um, their lodges and change that habitat to better suit them and other animals. So all of these adaptations um, allow the beaver to better survive and I think she's still eating back there. So let's talk about Maine's largest species of rodent and their habitat. So beavers can live in a variety of habitats. They can live in rivers, streams, small and large lakes, wetlands and marshes. Here you can see some examples of many different types of beaver habitats. All they need is a combination of water and forested space. So of course they're adapted for living where there, there has to be some water and for them to um, get the different things they need to, to build and work with. There's also a picture here. This was a baby beaver that came to the park was non-releasable due to an injury. Um, it was orphaned and it was at the park. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, young beavers and, and how that works with their parents. So beavers will stay with their parents until they're about two years old. When they're two years old, they are sexually mature and they will leave the family to start their own family. But don't worry, they have learned everything they need from their parents and they are armed with really great adaptations to go off on their own. One of the first adaptations we'll talk about here 
is their teeth. So if you look at this beaver skull and we look at these teeth, one of the first things we'll notice is that color. So they're very orange. That's because they are enriched with iron. So the iron in their teeth makes them that color and it also makes them very, very strong. So this outside here is really strong for the iron. And then on the back, you can see where it's not orange, it's white, and that's a little bit softer. So what happens is the tough iron part on the outside wears down slowly, and the inside wears down a little bit faster, and it makes this point, it's kind of like a chisel, and that's what they're gonna use to eat and to take down trees. So if a human tooth tried to eat a tree or chew on wood, they would break. But beavers have these special iron enriched teeth so they don't have to worry about their teeth breaking. And like other rodents, those teeth grow for the, for the entirety of their life. Those teeth are always growing. So they have to constantly be chewing on things to keep their teeth in good working shape. If they don't have things to chew on all the time, those teeth can continue to grow into the bottom and top of their jaw, and then they can't eat and they can't do the work that beavers need to do. If we look further back, we see these back teeth, these big flat teeth, and they still are kind of sharp on top. And that's for eating plants and for grinding up plants. So all those teeth in the back are gonna let them eat their brows that they need. So I was saying about this iron too. So beavers are herbivores, they only eat plants. So they get the iron from the plants that they eat. They get that iron from really rich green plants, kind of like we'll get iron from spinach. So a wild beaver is not gonna find spinach out in the wild, but Miriam here at the park, who you can see behind us now, she's gotten a little bit closer. If you look right here, that is the female beaver here at the park, walking around behind us. So she gets leafy greens, she gets spinach and kale, lots of vegetables, but we always need to make sure that she has lots of brows, lots of wood to be chewing on and eat so that her teeth stay really healthy. All right. Another adaptation that we'll look at is the beaver's fur. So this is a beaver fur here. And you can see that it has these long hairs on top and then underneath it has shorter fluffy hairs. So these two different types of hair do two different things for the beaver. So the bottom fluffy thick fur is for keeping them warm. Because of course they're living in pretty cold water, especially in the winter. And then these longer kind of more wiry hairs on top are the part that are gonna keep them waterproof. It provides some protection and it's gonna really keep the water sealed out. Beavers have a special gland at the bottom of their tail. And actually our beaver, I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer because she happens to be doing this behavior right now. So she is taking the oils from her oil gland down by her tail and she's covering her body with it. So that's like a conditioner that's gonna cover that hair and lock out water. So it's sort of like a cat or a house cat that's gonna groom itself. She's gonna spend a lot of time covering herself with that oil to keep her special fur coat in the best shape possible. Thank you for showing us that. <laughs> Sorry, hold on to your seats. It's a little shaky when we get moving here. There we go. All right. So that's for the beaver fur. And again, they learn that skill from their parents. Beavers learn a lot from their parents. Another adaptation here, if we look at these little rubber feet, these are the types of feet that beavers have. 
And this bigger one here is the back foot. And this smaller one here is their front foot. And these feet are adapted for doing different things. So the back foot has these webbed toes and those are for swimming. So those back feet are gonna kick through the water and help them paddle and swim. And then this front one, this front sort of more like a hand is for holding and grabbing things. So they have very different front and back feet for doing different things. That front hand's gonna be holding on to their food and holding on to mud and rocks and things when they're building. Here we can see that this is that exact same um, baby beaver from before. And we can see it eating and using its front hands to pick up and hold the food and bring it to its mouth. Another special physical adaptation that beavers have are their eyes. So they have a special membrane, like a lens that can cover their eyes when they go underwater. So it's sort of like if we wear sunglasses for the sun or if we need reading glasses to see um, or a pair of goggles for swimming underwater. It's like their own built-in goggles. So it's a special membrane that closes when they go underwater. They can also pinch their noses shut. And it's not just so they can talk funny. It's so that water can't get up their noses when they're swimming around too. Another part of their body that closes is their ears. They have little ear flaps that also seal up when they go to swim underwater. So their eyes, their nose, and their ears all can seal so that they can go underwater for a long time. Beavers can go underwater for over 10 minutes sometimes. In this picture, we really wanna look at that beaver tail, that long, flat, paddle-like tail on the back of the beaver. So that tail does a few different things. It serves a couple of different purposes. One is to slap or do a tail slap on the water. That's gonna make a big sound and a big splash. And then that communicates, that tells all the other beavers that there is something that they need to worry about. It alerts them to danger. And other animals in the habitat have learned to read that signal also. So beavers aren't just communicating with other beavers, but other animals living in that wetland habitat have learned to also read that sign that there could be danger around. One more thing here is this beaver scat. So this is a beaver scat. This is a sample of beaver poo. And what they're gonna do with that is leave their scent. So scent is another important tool for communicating. So they're gonna move that around their territory and it marks their territory and lets, them, lets other animals and other beavers know that that territory is already being lived in by a beaver family. All right. So next we're gonna talk about beavers building their homes, how they build and why they build. Here's a picture of a beaver lodge. And a beaver lodge is the beaver's home. So they, when they go out after they're two years old and they are looking to establish their new home, they're either gonna build their lodge in a new area or sometimes they'll even take over an abandoned lodge that has some regrowth. So they sort of have a foundation to already start with. And they learn how to do this from their parents when they're babies in those first two years when they're staying with their parents. We have some other pictures here that show how beavers chop wood and how they carry those branches around. So here we can see the beavers chewing on that wood, carrying the branches. And again, those are skills that they're learning from their parents. So they're gonna learn what kinds of trees they're looking for and what techniques to use when they're chewing on those trees. Also something important to know is that beaver lodges are more than just a floating pile of sticks. So the thing that we see when we're walking around the water is just part of that beaver lodge. A big part of the beaver lodge is actually underneath the water. So instead of just the sticks on top, under the water, the part that we don't see, 
There's going to be other um, sticks, but they'll also use stones, rocks, and mud to seal up and to build the foundation of their lodges. So they're more complicated than just a floating pile of sticks that the beaver family is sitting inside of. And oftentimes it's not just a beaver family inside of their lodge. They'll also have other animals living inside there with them. It's sort of like a, a hotel or a, a bed and breakfast. So especially in the winter months when finding warm housing is really important for small critters, there might be snakes, frogs, mice, and muskrats that will live in the beaver lodge with the beaver family. The other thing that we know that beavers build are beaver dams. So beavers do not live in their beaver dams. These are not their homes. Beaver dams are for changing the flow of water. It's all about water control. So beavers live best in a very wet wetland area. So they wanna have as much water as possible. So if we look here, this is a beaver chew, and we can see how the beaver used those teeth to take this tree down and strip all the bark off of this. So they're going to eat this outside part, and then they're going to build with what's left. I have one too. This is one that um, the beaver here at the wildlife park has been working on the last couple of days. And you can see how she has almost every piece of bark stripped off of this. And this is really important for us. So you can see this end, she didn't do that. That was a human, that was us that cut that down for her and brought it to her. But it's really important that she has these so that she's always using those teeth and working on those important beaver skills and adaptations. Helps keep her healthy and happy. So it's very similar skills that they use when they're building the lodge. They're gonna carry those same skills that they learn from their parents into their lodge building and their dam building. But building the dam is all about water control. So that is for flooding an area and it makes more of that wet habitat for the beavers to live in and for other animals too. And this is also important for times of drought they create a more widespread and a deeper wetland habitat that collects water for times of drought. And this leads to um, how uh, leads into how important beavers are for the entire um, ecosystem that they're living in. They are a keystone species. That means that they're a very important species and that they greatly affect other wildlife in that area. They are one of the few animals that completely change the habitat that other people and animals rely on for water, food, and shelter. And without beavers, the landscape would look drastically different. Beavers can even make an oasis in a desert. There are beavers that live in desert habitats that have actually created a wetland oasis with greenery. Um, and it's really important for other animals that live there also and even for humans that live in that area that um, often experience drought and things like that. So if we look at a wetland, what type of animals do you think benefit from that wetland that the beaver has created? What are some other animals that you can picture or imagine are benefiting from that beaver's habitat? So there's gonna be all kinds of amphibians and reptiles. So we'll have turtles and frogs. We'll have different species of birds, such as herons, osprey, or ducks. And of course, the iconic Maine moose also live in these wetlands and also eat the aquatic plants and everything that is so important in these wetland ecosystems. And the beavers help support that system for all those other animals. So beavers move best in the water. This is our beaver here at the park. This is the other end of her enclosure. And we can see um, that she adjusts to our schedule. So most beavers, wild beavers, are active in the evening and in the early morning and in the, and at like sunrise and sunset, dusk and dawn. So they're nocturnal and they're crepuscular. But here at the park, 
she has adapted and changed to our routine. That's when she's being fed. That's when she gets to see people. Um, there's more commotion around the park. So she's adapted to our, our schedule here. I don't know if, I'm kind of blocking where she is. She's over at the other end down there. So she has her little home that you can kind of see at the end and that's her lodge. And she's built that all on her own. We have not built her lodge for her. She rebuilds it every year. All right. So beavers also have always served an economic and historical value um, for humans. So we have some different images here that show some examples of how for over 200 years, people have valued um, the beaver for its fur and for the oils from that special oil gland. So in the top picture, there's some pelts and furs there that they would use for fashion and, and especially for felt hats. And then there's a woman holding a um, sample of oil and those will be used um, for fancy perfumes. Um, sometimes they were even using vanilla flavoring. But now, now we have a plant-based substitute that is used a lot more widely for those perfumes and vanilla flavoring. And that's called castor seed. That's the plant-based substitute that we can use instead of um, the beaver oil now. And beavers are still hunted for use. Um, the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife here in Maine regulates and monitors beaver populations and monitors and regulates beaver hunting. Uh, so we've gone over a lot of beaver facts and I could probably talk about beavers a lot longer, but I would love to hear if anyone has any questions about beaver adaptations or anything we've talked about so far. So we do have one question already. It is, are beavers related to muskrats? Okay, so muskrats and beavers are rodents. So a muskrat and a beaver are both um, in a similar family, but they're very different from each other. Uh, I think people sometimes see muskrats and mistake them for beavers, but they're much, much smaller. Muskrats are a lot smaller than beavers are. Um, and it can be confusing too, because muskrats will live in and right near beaver lodges and beaver dams. Um, they kind of will blend right in with them, but uh, they are very different from each other, but they are related as in, as in both being in that rodent family and they are mammals. So all mammals are related. <laughs> That's great. And another question that we have is, is it dry inside the beaver lodge? Yeah, that's a really good question. So beavers cannot just live in water. Um, they'll actually get sick. They could get pneumonia if they lived in water for too long. So the center of their beaver lodge is actually above the water and it's on a mound in the middle that's gonna be all um, different types of mud and they'll also weave in wood and rocks and stones in there. So beaver lodges are pretty complicated. They'll have a series of different entrances and exits and everything, um, but the inside of that lodge is dry and warm. So especially in the winter, they're gonna be in there and they're gonna be taking care of their coats taking care of their babies um, and keeping warm and dry inside their beaver lodge. Another question we have is how many babies do they typically have in a year? Yeah, so a, a female beaver can have anywhere from one all the way up to four kits. They usually just have like one or two, um, but they can have as many as three or four. And in that family unit, they'll have the, the new or born babies and those one year babies with them. So if you see a, a family of beavers or a colony of beavers, um, it'll be the parents, that one year old um, that hasn't left yet, and then the newborn babies that are from that winter and the two year olds will have gone off to start their own families. And one more question we seem to have here is how long will they occupy a single lodge? Do they keep going back to the same one, using the same one year after year? Yeah, so a 
beaver can live a long time. Beavers can live um, in the wild up to 10 or 15 years. And it's similar here in captivity, um, but it really depends on the resources that are around them. So if they have, um, like we said, they're most uh, active and safest in the water. So they don't want to have to venture very far from their water to get their food and to get their resources. So if a family has used all the resources within a close proximity of their lodge, they might have to move all together to find a new place, but they'll stay in the same lodge as long as they have all the resources they need to take care of themselves and their families and survive. And so that goes into a question for the winter time. In the winter, are they just staying in the lodge or are they coming out and swimming as well? Yeah, that's a good question. So they, they don't just stay in their lodge. Um, beavers will collect food and they have almost like a little pantry under the water. So they dig these holes in the, in the mud to make it deeper and they store their food in there. So they have to come in and out of their lodges to get to their food. Um, but they probably in the winter, because that top is frozen over in a lot of their areas, if the water's not flowing and things, they probably stay a bit closer to their homes. But they don't hibernate. They don't stay inside those lodges and not leave for the winter. They still continue their beaver activities. And I'm just going to do two more questions here. Um, you can always message us if you, we don't get to all your questions right now. But we had another question about what do beavers eat? What are their preferred, what's their preferred diet? Yeah, so in the wild, um, beaver, the majority of their diet is going to be browse and aquatic plants. So they're, when I say browse, that is the pieces of trees um, that isn't the actual hard wood of the tree. So they'll eat the bark, twigs, and, le and leaves off of trees. Some of their favorites are popple, aspen, and birch. Um, and they also eat aquatic plants. So those are another important source of vitamins and nutrients um, from those aquatic plants that they'll eat too. All right, and last, say what types of predators would hunt a beaver? Yeah, so one of, some of the big beaver predators are um, Canadian lynx and maybe even bobcat. Um, they, are going to be on the lookout for those things. That's why it's so important for them to be close to the water because most lynx and bobcats aren't gonna swim, especially in the deep water after a beaver. So that's part of why they want to expand and grow that wetland habitat to keep them and their families safe. Um, but also people. So they're also trying to avoid humans also because they can be trapped and things by people also. So, but their, their natural predators are gonna be things like the Canadian links. All right, that's all the time we have for questions right now, but if you do have more questions, um, you can write them in the chat and uh, we will do our best to try to answer what we can. Perfect. So before we wrap up, we do have a recommended follow-up activity that you can do at home. So what we're gonna explain is how to build your own beaver dam. So what you'll need is a container, some mud, or you can do Play-Doh or use one of those salt dough recipes to make your own salt dough. I used mud for my example here. And then some sticks, rocks, really anything that you think a beaver would also wanna to use to build their, their beaver dam. And then you also need some water. So we'll test how good my, my dam holds up against this water here. So I'm gonna pour water into this backside on this side and we'll see if the water flows down. So mine's okay. It's starting to leak through a little bit, but it was fairly slow. I definitely challenge you to take a little bit more time than I did and really make your beaver dam hold up make it impenetrable, let no water through. <laughs> All right. So it's pretty sunny out here. Miriam, I think is 
nesting, resting in her, in her lodge, but I'm happy that she did show us that great behavior of her spreading those oils on her fur and swimming around behind us. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us today. I hope you had fun and learned some new things about Maine's busy beavers. If you want to check out the website um, for the virtual tour of the park and other things you can do at home, that is Maine Fish and Wildlife. That's M-E -E, Fish and Wildlife. And there's other um, examples on there of activities and other virtual tours. Um, and we'll also send out a follow-up email with that information as well. So thank you all very much. All right, thank you everybody for joining us for Maine's Busy Beavers. Again, you, you can check us out online at mefishwildlife.com and mainewildlifepark.com for more information and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you everybody, have a great day.